everybody, Trevor here, and welcome to a brand new Top 5 video. Let's talk about Disney Live Action Remakes. Now, the Disney Live Action Remake Library has been one of the most controversial things in recent years because not only most of them are pointless, but they do tend to destroy one's childhood, including my own. But we're not here for the negatives. No, 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 no. We're here to focus on the positives which is why I'm making a Top 5 Best Disney Live Action Remakes video. For this list, I won't be including any sequels, nor will I be including any movies based on non-Disney properties. Now without further ado, let's take a look at my Top 5 Favorite Disney Live Action Remakes of All Time. Number 5. Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland This is the first Disney Live Action Remake in the 2010s, and the reason this is so low on the list is mainly because it's technically a sequel to the original Alice in Wonderland from 1951, but with a more mature and gothic twist. In this story, a 19-year-old Alice returns to Wonderland, now called Underland, after many years and was considered the chosen one by the inhabitants of that world because of some prophecy, which says that they needed her to defeat the Jabberwocky and the Red Queen during battle. While I do understand why some people may not like this as much as the original anime version from 1951, but personally, I kind of like it better than the original in terms of its dark and mature atmosphere. I especially thought the acting was spot on, especially Johnny Depp as the Mad Hatter and Helena Bottom Carter as the Red Queen. Also, in my opinion, Tim Burton is a great director because he was famous for creating The Nightmare Before Christmas as well as directing other great films such as Corpse Bride and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So all in all, Alice in Wonderland 2010 is not only a decent live-action remake, but a pretty good sequel to the original cartoon. Not that I hate the original cartoon to begin with, but still, I like to have characters that aren't annoying or kitty. Number 4. Aladdin 2019 In my honest opinion, when it comes to Disney live-action remakes in 2019, Aladdin would be my favorite of the bunch for a number of reasons. First of all, I enjoy the casting choices for each character, especially Will Smith as the genie because like the late Robin Williams, he also made the character hilarious. Now don't get me wrong, while I do miss Robin Williams a lot after his passing in 2014, and I still think he'll always be the best genie ever because of his huge variety of different impressions, but that doesn't mean nobody else can be as good as him, and Will Smith is no exception. In fact, I still forgive the guy after what he did to Chris Rock at the Oscars a long time ago. Please don't hate me for it. Another reason why I like his portrayal as the genie is because I always thought it was a reference to the 1990s movie Shazam, which also stars Sinbad as the genie. After all, Black people can be genies too. Heck, they even had black characters in the Arabian Nights book, which I've read a long time ago. One of my favorites in the movie was when Aladdin and G were having an awkward conversation with the Sultan and Jasmine at the palace. Trust me, my sister and I were laughing our asses off during this hilarious sequence. But the movie itself is not without its flaws. For instance, during the Prince Ali musical number, when Genie sings the line, when it comes to exotic type mammals, they showed ostriches instead of, you know, mammals. Um, Disney, you do realize that ostriches are birds and not mammals, right? At least the original cartoon got the right idea with the gorilla balloon. How did they mess that up in the live action version? And not to mention in an earlier scene when Abu picks up a piece of the forbidden treasure in the Cave of Wonders, Aladdin sees this and later responds by shouting, Abu, no! And I'm like, wow, latest response ever. Also, I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get to see Jafar turn into a cobra in this version like he did in the original 1992 film, but oh well. But aside from those complaints, I still think this live-action remake is the best one of 2019, mainly because of Will Smith's portrayal as Genie, and why I thought it was fitting for the character. And I also love the fact that it was able to manage to fix a few problems from the original, such as making Aladdin escape the Barry Cave of Wonders as his first wish. In fact, I consider it much better than the Lion King remake, which I thought was completely pointless. 
and I'll eventually explain why in a future top 5 video. Number 3, Cinderella 2015. Many people consider this the best of the Disney live action remake library, and for understandable reasons. And one of those reasons was that it doesn't copy the original 1950 adaptation verbatim. However, I put it as number 3 because if I were to put it as number 1, then it'd be too cliched. Secondly, I don't watch this version as much as the original cartoon. I don't know why, I guess I'm just more used to cartoons rather than live action in general. Still, I enjoy this one because not only it doesn't copy the original, as I've said, but I like the very ending where the stepsisters apologize for being mean in the first place, and that Cinderella tells the stepmother that she forgave her just before she leaves with the prince. Oh, and like the Red Queen from Alice in Wonderland, I especially enjoyed Helena Bonham Carter's performance as the fairy godmother in this tale. Her scenes were quite funny in my opinion. But my most favorite part of this movie of all would have to be the song Lavender's Blue, which was sung by Cinderella during the climax, and was the movie's main theme during the ending credits. I know there are other renditions of Lavender's Blue, but for now, this version of it is the best. And those are the reasons why Cinderella 2015 deserves a number 3 spot on this list. I highly recommend you go watch it for yourselves. Number 2, The Jungle Book 2016 There are three live-action remakes of The Jungle Book. The first two were made in the 1990s, which I only saw parts of, while the third was made back in 2016, and out of all of them, the 2016 remake is the winner for many reasons. For one thing, I love how Mowgli develops over the course of this movie, because not only he was a feral boy, but he also somehow learned to make his own inventions by himself just like a real man would. A perfect example of this was in the beehive scene where he was trying to protect himself from the bees while fetching Baloo some honey. Another great example of character development was that unlike in the original cartoon, Mowgli was able to kill Shere Khan by making him fall to his fiery doom and that he was brave enough to fight him. Oh, and I forgot to mention in the script that I love the fact that the wolves in this version have more screen time than in the original cartoon. I think it's a really nice touch. Now, if there's one thing I'm iffy about in this version, it would be the fact that Ka was gender swapped and was voiced by Scarlett Johansson. No offense, but I really don't like the idea of gender swapping in general because it feels so wrong. Not that I'm sexist or anything, I just prefer to stay true to a character's gender, race, etc. as much as possible. And I know a lot of people were mixed on Christopher Walken's performance as King Louis, but personally, I don't mind it that much because of the line, Call me Louis. But at the same time, I would have preferred the original Louis Prima from the original cartoon, as well as the current Jim Cummings as the character. But that's just me, though. So, overall... The Jungle Book 2016 deserves the number 2 spot for these reasons alone, and why I love it better than any other Disney live-action adaptation of the tale. The casting was spot on for the most part, the action was spectacular and fun to watch, it has some nice throwbacks to the original 1967 film, and best of all, I love how it combines both that and the original book by Rudyard Kipling, which makes this version the best live-action remake in my book, no pun intended. I highly recommend you give this an honest chance before it's too late. Oh, and here's hoping that the upcoming sequel will be as good as the first one. Now, before I get to my number one pick, I just want to give a couple honorable mentions. Being the Beast 2017. I'll admit, I did enjoy this one at first, but looking back at it now, it's pretty mediocre. Sure, I can understand why Emma Watson was casted as Belle, but when it comes to singing, not so much. Dumbo 2019. It got beat out by Aladdin 2019. And while this version does make me cry like the original one did, but like most remakes, it does have major flaws, which I don't have time to go over. But still, it's an okay film in my eyes, and Danny DeVille makes this worth watching. And my number one most favorite Disney live action remake of all time is. 101 Dalmatians, 1996. 
This is one of the very first Disney live-action remakes of the 1990s, along with the two Jungle Book films I was talking about earlier. But I put this as number one for a few reasons. For one thing, I thought Glenn Close was perfect as Cruella de Vil. She made her hilarious and frightening at the same time. In fact, I love it more than Emma Stone's Cruella. No offense. Secondly, I thought the other cast members did an excellent job with their roles, especially Jeff Daniels as Roger Dearly, despite being an American actor. And thirdly, all the dogs in this movie, especially the Dalmatian puppies, were so freaking adorable. In fact, I always cried at the scene where Lucky seems to be dying, but then got quote-unquote lucky in the end, no pun intended. Now, I'm sure some people were complaining that the animals didn't talk in this, but personally, I think it's for the greater good that they didn't talk at all, because otherwise, production would take a lot longer than it should have, and it would make the movie even more cheesy and corny than it already was. Honestly, I don't care what the critics say about this flick. I still think it's better than Cruella in terms of story and characters. In fact, I love it as much as the original 1961 cartoon. They're both perfect in their own right because of how the stories were set in their own respective timelines. And out of all the Disney live-action remakes, this is the one I'm most nostalgic for, which is the main reason why I put this as number one. I highly recommend you give it a watch because it's really that great of a film, or at least better than 102 Dalmatians, which was cheesier and cornier. Now let me know in the comment section below on which of these Disney live-action remakes are your favorite. Do you agree with my list, or do you have your own personal preference? This is Trevor Davis, signing off.